tune. I'll get another. What a fucking tune. Uh, I'm going to have to find another one now to beat that one, aren't I? Tune. So much shit. Oh, yeah.
Microphone check, make it a microphone check. Give it a microphone, I make them make it a microphone dead. Don't step to me, newbie. I could truly be moody. I could have played the fucking Grinch in the movies. I've been a part time shadow cat, part time. That is not a guy that I would ever want to try to battle rap. Snap, crack a pop, mind fried to a crisp. Make an MC into a wide eyed lunatic.
Good, dude. Good. I feel like I feel good, dude. I was like, I was with a brown belt. Yeah. And I, I did pretty well, although I couldn't quite finish him. But I think it was on account of my arm, one of my arms not being so strong after the surgery. Yeah. But I mean, I'm right there. Please. I'm right there. Yeah. Punch him big in the time. Fight. No, I was choking him from behind. Yeah. Now I got tired and cardio tapped because I'm out of shape because I haven't been training for two months. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What's, what's doing here? It's finishing off this page, man. Like, I finished the top bit a while ago, but this last panel has been giving me jiff. What's that know. animal? It's, the, it's this dude. Oh, fuck yes. Now I got to name that animal. Right. I, I, um, I've had to spread sort of the introduction and... Uh, yeah, let me get the original page and I can count the reason why. Bear with me a second. Uh, by the way did you tweet etc that you're yeah there's been a few people dropping doing in. thing okay there's one where's the other one Should have a little crack at doing the spore logo in a bit. Huh? Sounds good to me. There it is. Right. So, so the the, the introduction to um, Stelios. Uh, there are. There's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of panels, and there's a lot of publishing panels. So originally, when I did my. Oh, when I did my um, preliminaries, um, each page had uh, a lot of panels on. So this one had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then this one had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine, right? Which is all right, but the problem was because um, there's a fair bit of dialogue in this, and there's some established chores. Uh, and I was going to be able to tell the story and hit those um, those points. So I've just you divided it into two pages, have you? Yeah, well, it was two, but it's going to have to be three. Because so if we go back to one of us on. Okay, that's not a problem. Um, oh no. Yeah, I know you'd be cool with it. I, I um, when we I think when we come to letter it, it's going to be a process of um, uh, fine tuning and thank you, uh, fine tuning and editing. Um, Hello, Nutella VR. Uh, shit, where am I? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, New subscribe. So, so if you see this one. This one, this is a split page. This has still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven panels, which is about right. Three, and then we have, um, the establishing shot of the castle. Mm hmm. It's here. And then that's got one, two, three, four, five. How, Go on. How much of that was, um, I can't remember right now, how much of that was a page? Or how much of a page was that panel? How big was that panel, I'm trying to say? So I think originally this, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll have to go back to the script, but I think this 
It was there, right on that page. This page and this page. Yeah, I remember that. On, and then I think this page and the page. The following yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm yeah, pretty sure that's right. It was the same one as well. So there's one more to come where Stelios takes the the the, the artifact from Roken, and then um, and then we can lead into Roken spending his time in gasoline. Um, but we can. I figure, I figure when we come to edit it together, as soon as I get the black and whites together, we'll, we'll all of them. We'll do that with what we've got and this, and because I, I feel like it's going to be a case of, of editing a bit of the comic as well, um, because there's. That's why it's actually good that we're not lettering until the end. It occurs to me. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we're, there's like, going to be changes to the script. Yeah, there absolutely is. Yes, and I, I, I assume that you feel that way because there, there. I'm starting to realise as I'm telling your story, uh, is that there, there are there are transitional changes from a from a, um, um, a, a novel into a comic that are cr sort of unforeseen until you start doing the. the the, the certain establishing shots for each page. I could, I could follow it to the T to the novel, but the problem is because they're different formats. Check it's it like, out. The cadence. The cadence. I'm listening to you. I heard everything you said. Yeah. No. The cadence and like the rhythm of the of the image progression requires an adjustment in the rhythm of the storytelling. Exactly, yeah. So so when we come to do it, please feel free. I mean, I know you will anyway, but please feel free to just go, look, maybe we need to swap some of these panels around or we need this here and um, I can do it. It's fine. It's all good. Yeah. Check it out. That's the fantastic thing about, you know what I'm saying, technology. We have tools available to us to edit this because this is going to sound like a tangent, but it's related. I, I was writing yesterday, last night, and I was altering the order of sentences in the same paragraph. Sure. You know what a bitch that would be to do if you're writing on a typewriter? Right. You'd have to type the entire page again, yeah. starting from just the right moment to not fuck up the previous page, right? It's yeah. it's it's incredibly tedious. Yeah. So it's tedious on a fucking when you're using Word, let alone uh, it's right. Like... Yeah, I mean, and and like my my retard fingers, you know, couldn't really handle. It. That would be really strenuous for me to do, and I'm not kidding. So. The technology is is so interesting how how we we change the way we interact um, with it. But what I, the point I'm trying to make is that despite the disadvantages evident in working long distance, the technology as such gives us the advantages that we need to mitigate. Hey man, I think we're all doing all right long distance. Hell yeah, we are. We get on very very well, so. We do, and we're productive as well. You, I would consider you at this point uh, a very close friend of mine. Mate, me too. And the only thing missing is that face-to-face -face real life heat, which is coming. Yeah. And it's going to be like a top three for me. Easy. <laughs> but yeah, man. I, uh, I've just been wanting to get this out of the way for the last week, really. I, I, I had my final day at college yesterday teaching so that's it now i'm off for six weeks how many times have you had your final thing no i'm just kidding so so yeah, yeah, no, so, i remember it's the, you know it's the, the, I teach the thesis college, yeah. yeah yeah it's a lot I'm of different a, final things. day teaching for before summer holidays so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm now free to uh every day to put some work in that's awesome how long is your summer vacation uh six weeks so we should get quite a bit done <sighs> Here, um, I'm just going to throw this out there. Go on, dude. Suppose mm. in one year's time, yeah. you come and stay uh, at our beach house yeah. in Santa Marta with your wife and your son and pay yeah. no lodging 
at all. Hey man, I'd, I'd drop you something. I'd drop, definitely drop you something. All right. But yeah, good. I'm up for that. Great. Go to the beachy. Go to surfing. Right. You could do. You could teach a little. Um, you know, you could do for me. You could teach. You could teach a little free Muay Thai seminar. Oh, I'd love to do that. To to my jujitsu friends. Yeah, I'd be up for that. And uh, we could go to the beachy and eat some eat something on the beach. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like married couples. <laughs> no, like like drug abusers. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's totally doable. And I'm eventually going to go there because I oh, well, can stay with us. Yeah, I think you'd uh, I think you'd enjoy it. Yeah. You'd have a couple of good nights out. Absolutely. Yeah, man. I really want to see you know um St. Chad. What is it? Is it a church? Or uh, is it where he's buried or something? Where's this? In St. Chad from uh Litchfield? Oh, there, there is a St. Chad's down the road from Litchfield, yeah. Right, but... There's but a church in, in the middle of Litchfield that's got, like, um, all these plaques on the wall about like, the history of it. And did you yeah, know... I want to go there, because my name's Chad. The last person in Britain to be burned at the stake was at that church. Wow. And get this, Ben. This is the most bizarre part about that story. He was burned for heresy, right? But they burned him twice. Did he survive the first time? He did survive the first time. He he renounced his heresy uh, the first time, so they let him down. And then a week later, he went, no, I've changed my mind. <laughs> so they struck him back up and burnt him again. Oh, I see. So he didn't miraculously survive. He survived because he renounced his heresy. Yeah. And then he thought it over and he decided, yeah, the burning was worth it. So, okay. I mean, you um, can't put the guy. He stuck to his gun. Let's yeah. play. Was he right or not? Probably not. I think well, he, it I'll, sounds like he, was, he had mental illness. He was I can't tell you if he was right or not, but I can tell you my opinion. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know exactly what he said. Do you know his name? No, but I could look it up. Yeah. Um, I'm the right kind of geek that I'll actually tell you what my religion says about this alleged heresy. But yeah, I don't. I don't. Oh yeah. Adjust. His name was Edward Whiteman. Edward Whiteman. Yeah, in fifteen. Yeah, so he died in sixteen twelve. He was an English radical and Anabaptist minister. Is it spelled W I G H T M A N? Sorry. It is. All right. Thank executed God. at Litchfield on charges of heresy. He was the last person to be burned, burned at the stake for heresy. He was an. Anabaptist minister. <gasps> I think there might be a lot wrong with that. The last person. What's, it, what's that, uh, mm. Ben? What's an Anabaptist? Let me make sure I don't mix it up with Baptist. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so here's something wrong with Anabaptism. One Go. thing. Go. The, of the term itself, anyways, what the her the heresy, the main heresy, is um, that they don't believe in infant baptisms, okay. which is which seem may seem like a small thing, but it inadvertently uh, implies that a human being is not sentient until a certain age. Until a certain age, and uh, that's not. What holy tradition says. Yeah, sure. uh, I had my kid baptized, and he was—you know—he seemed pretty sentient at the time. He had a great time. 
Yeah, I reckon. Because I, I think there's more ways to understand the world than words, right? So 100%. before kids talk, they definitely know what's going on right. to some degree, in some way. Uh, yeah, there's, there's um, oh, I forget the, where the philosophy comes from now. But there's, there's, uh, so yeah, burn him at the stake, dude. Yeah. If you don't baptize children, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, you should never kill anyone because of a heresy. That's not a uh, punishable, an offense punishable by death, according to the Ten Commandments. Uh, sorry, we could talk about not religion now if you want. I don't want not to. Mike, this, okay. is, this is a tra chat stream with drawing, right? You talk about whatever you want. <laughs> cool. So, um,. Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm, I feel, I'm so glad that you explained that just now about uh, readjusting the script to match the, the, the complete art, um, the new art. Yeah. Is that something um, you, were, you were thinking about? Not um, liminally. Right. I mean, I hadn't put it in. I, I wouldn't have put it that way, but you were right. Yeah. So. Well, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, absolutely no trouble. Um, so, yeah, I would say it's your idea, but I was ready to hear it. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I assumed that you would have already thought about it in some capacity. I just thought that. Um, it makes perfect sense. Here. Yeah, it's worth saying that I'm all right, like, bending all the artwork to fit fit what we feel like. Well, what you yeah, feel, that's, a, you feel that's like. so cool. Because it's so it it makes it so easy for our two pieces to fit together to this adjust is, to each other, right? All of the all of the all of my favorite books um, have done that in some way, like like Lobo, uh, the the Bisley Lobo book. Oh, God damn, I forget who wrote wrote it now, but um, essentially he was sent the script and then he illustrated it in such a way that when he sent it back, they tweaked the script and then they retweaked oh. the comic itself, and then it became you know this massive. Um, it's cool, had a cool following. I think it's, it's kind of like when an artist and a writer work in synergy in that way. Yeah, it's the actual project, isn't it? It's kind of like you have to render it a few times. You know, yeah, like yeah. the but initial script is the first rendering, and then the, the the images you have to render to match the script better, and the script has to change to match the images better. It's... Precisely, and um, yeah, if you look at it as a draft. Mm -hmm. um, then, then you call them, but I think, um, yeah, if, if you are about the project, if it's just about the project, then that's probably something you should be doing. Um, in my mind, anyway, it just seems like uh, obvious. I do feel like, though, as, as the issues go on, I'm hope you know that that the, the necessity for that will get smaller and smaller because I think we're starting to become more um, uh, on each other's page, yep. Yeah, one hundred percent. And um, yeah, it bears repeating. But as 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 you already know, if we're putting out smaller portions yes. of Rokan at a time, that's going to speed up the process even more. Because then we can just concentrate on one mouthful. And speaking of which, um, check this out. Let me just. Oh, do <laughs> solo layout. See this, right? I picked this yeah, up the other day. This is a crowd funded bi monthly or double bi monthly um, comic book. Fuck yeah. Um, and it's done by lots of indie uh, artists and writers. How many pages is it? It is um, B30 pages, B30 pages. It's not 30, it's more than 30, bro. It's more than 30, yeah. And they do it every two months. Uh, I think so. I don't know if we could pull that off the first year. Maybe it's, it might be more than that, bro. It might be more than that. Um, okay, I'm looking for where it says it might be longer than that. Um, but it's got uh, one, two, three, four, five, page count. It's all right. Oh, I'm gone. Yeah, 65, 66, 67. Yo, it's a big one. 
Yeah, it is, it is thick. Show um, us some more of it. Uh, that's it. The, the, the comic's called Shift, but they... I've done this weird thing where they've got another group of people called the 77 to leave. You know what happens with indie everything is that you get 17 logos right. for everyone who ever breathed on it. Right, yeah. Um, so they've got like, this other group called the 77 to run a few issues. I don't even, I don't quite know what that means. It says, Show us some insights. Uh, there's nothing in here that I think we couldn't produce. No, our stuff's better than that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I've been nice. Yeah, I mean, I have to say because you're the artist, so you yeah. can't say it about yourself, but it's true. Um, yeah, you, I mean, there's a, there's an indie feel to it, for sure. It's got some adverts <laughs> as well, um, which is not necessarily... That's cool. Oh, adverts. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's a very different sort of artwork. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, it's very cartoony. Uh, that one goes on for fuck. So, yeah. so yeah, so they're crowdfunded. So why couldn't we, right? Right, right, exactly. Because um, I don't. Yeah, I read a few. I read. I read the stories, and the, you know, the, the, all right. Nothing blew me away necessarily. The the. Because um, I'll tell you what. Oh. No, finish your thought because I'm going somewhere else. No, saying, nothing blew me away necessarily. I, I maybe if I'd finished, you know, the next issue, finish some stories, then I'll be more on board. But I think okay. for, the, for the first one I've read, I was like, yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's all so right. I, I think it'd be a lot of fun if we did, for example, um, eight pages of Rokan, mm -hmm. uh, four pages of the. Rokan's grimoire, right? Yeah. Which would be pretty simple. And I, I, I think we talked about this already. I want to do like funny pages, so it like looks like old parchment or something, or a yeah, scroll yeah. or some, something like yeah. that, right? So it's like because I've been looking through magazines since we had the idea to make a magazine, yeah. and I'm, I'm something I noticed a lot is that they play a lot with the page presentation dynamics yes. from from one p bit to the other, which is, I think, a, a very good idea for several reasons. One, because it it's easy to flip through it, right? That's why it's more, it's called a floppy, isn't it? It's yeah. Better to flip through it and, like, find what you're looking for because there's a stark contrast. And the other reason why is because it makes reading the whole thing uh a variety of there of it feels more like a variety experience and it, it makes it feel longer yeah yeah you want it to be like <clears throat> people decide to pick it up you want it to be like an event right that's right yeah so so i'm thinking like eight pages of rokan um four pages of rokan's grimoire and then it could be like another eight page story i have I have stories that even though they're not ready to publish, they would be pretty easy to turn into comic book scripts. So I could do one, um, for example, like the, um, the jacket, right? Or, yeah. Or I might call it jacket man, which I think will, is a name that will sound bad to you the first seven times um, you hear it and then you'll love it. I think what but anyways, I thought it was a good idea for the format was, um, <clears throat> I, sh I think I showed you on another stream. There was a, a um, a monthly comic book called Clint, a Mark Miller one, and every issue they would have a story that was could only be I think, maximum three pages long. Um, okay. So that would give, uh, if you had any like quick throw ideas, you could experiment with that really short format. And plus, you get you get an artist that can do very very quick. Yeah. That's true. It might be you're you're right. It might be easier to do three. Quickies than one medium. Yeah. Actually. And if that were the case, that would be worth it real estate wise. For sure. But the, the point is, we could fill up the first issue with, with just my writing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And and then after that, open it up to people if they want to help, if they want to contribute something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down for that. Um, 
you know, just to get an issue out the door. Yeah. A A A S A P. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, but yeah, it was weird that I saw that. Uh, I, don't, I had no idea it existed until uh, the other day, and I was out in town. Oh no way! So it is possible. Yeah. And that, that was uh, store as well. That they've managed, four, to, uh, managed to get it into stores. That's awesome. Yeah, and what a good this as well in it. Yeah. That you that you've seen that. You interrupted my joint smoking today, sir. Sorry, bro. Live stream. That's all right. I can smoke at home. But yeah, no, it's perfectly all right. I go to the dojo all the time. Daddy Aria. How about that, huh? Yeah. How are you, my friend? Whoop, whoop, it's the Rogan Squad. Aria, I don't know if we can tell people, but Aria's got good things happening to him. In yeah, his life. congratulations on your news, mate. He's uh, he's had a bum implant. That's right. He wanted to identify yeah. more with his yeah. Mexican side of his heritage. He felt yeah. he didn't have a big enough ass to really pass yeah. as Mexican. So, yeah. To so, identify. Yeah, the good news is he's got a giant arse now. Yep. It's a cake. Yep. Like a Mexican. Yeah. yeah. Mexican. Sorry. On your Mexican ass. Yeah. <laughs> I like that animal. It looks like a Nazgul. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It does. It looks exactly like one. <laughs> But the cool thing is it has a different sort of body. Yeah, yeah, it's like a little dinosaur. So it's sort of like a... Have you ever read a Lynn Carter? Uh, you know who no. So he's one of the less good uh, fantasy, high fantasy, like pioneers. Yeah, yeah. I think he's a contemporary of Robert Howard. I'm not sure. Maybe he came later. But that's that style and that genre. Mm. But not one of my favorites, to be perfectly honest. But he, what was characteristic about it, why I'm bringing him up, even though I don't, I'm not a huge fan, is because he was um, something really characteristic about his work was dinosaurs. Ah. He did he did like a humans coexisting with dinosaurs spin on yeah. on fantasy, which was. A good idea to be fair and he did it well i just don't like his prose well, so yeah so it's very lynn carter which is a compliment believe it or not <laughs> yeah you just spent you just spent 10 minutes telling me how you don't like him no because like when you read lynn carter you don't think man what a bad idea you think god damn it i would have done this better yeah 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 so I it's good that. ideas you know sure 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 I <laughs> I understand. <laughs> uh, what was I just doing? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, dude. I want to talk about the crow, but I gotta save it. Oh um, mate, you can talk about week, it. Yeah, there's a only week one, after tomorrow. There's only one person watching. I think it's Aria. I, I I'm on a crow kick also. Is it, it's how right? Oh, I like that. That's right, isn't it? That's like my. Look at look at this t-shirt of mine. This is yes, bro. I'm basically Nick unlisted if you were bald. <laughs> um, no, but I'm into all that stuff, big time, big time a lot because. Well, I used to be like this straight edge punk, you know, and I I listened to the Cure. And I listened to Joy Division, and I didn't do drugs. And I had this preposterous, idealistic view of the world that I was super uncompromising about it. And a little bit like Eric, to be fair. And um, yeah, we were both wrong, but it's still fun to revisit. Oh, yeah, but it, it, it's um, point of view as an aesthetical movement, the goth thing. I like it. 
very strong. I really like it. And the crow came out just at the right time for its peak. Um, so, and it was a great action film as well. So it sort of caught both, uh, you know, fan bases in the net. And then you got the Brandon Lee thing as well, which made it even more popular. And he had a fantastic performance. His, How his... cool is Brandon Lee, right? Yeah, he's really, really good in that film. And then, and, and even though it's different from the comic book and quite, you know, some quite heavy places, it's st- it, as as um, a translation, it works incredibly well. It works incredibly well. And rewatching the movie, there are some things I prefer. Oh right, okay. Definitely the overall impact, yeah. aesthetic, and tone of the comic book is better, mm-hmm. without question. Yeah. But um, I didn't care for the stomach cutout as much in the book be- just because it was an op- missed opportunity. His, his, draw- his car being the crow insignia, yeah. I thought, looked better. Yeah, 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 yeah. And especially since it became a motif. Well, yeah, look, as, 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 um, as franchises mature... They sort of are able to latch on to that they become more streamlined in their ideas. Um, in it. Yeah, and as and I, from what I can tell, I think mean, James O'Barr works strictly on the crow, you know, in a solitary way um, because of, of you know because of his influence for the crow was was the fact that his girlfriend died in a car crash and he could never get over it. That's yeah, you can. I mean, you can obviously see that it's his oh, his yeah. own mourning process. Yeah, if you see his um, interviews with him, he talks about it extensively. You know, he, he basically it took him nine years to write the book. He just lived in this. I mean, it sounds like he had a, pr- a pretty grim life up until he met this person, and then and then this person was sort of taken away from him. So he 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 really had a um, a period of just. You know, severe depression. And I think tried to exercise that through making the crow. Uh, also yeah, didn't work. <laughs> did, yeah. did he commit suicide or something? No, no, he's still alive. But it, you know, okay. he's still, he, 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 he still, still suffers or something. He still suffers. Yeah, and I think when they came to make the film, um, because they did it collaboratively with Obar, he um, he became very close friends with Brandon Lee. <laughs> And then, of oh course, no! And then, and of course, Lee died during the filming. Um, uh, and Obar had this thing that he, even though his girl died in a car crash, he, he sort of blamed himself, uh, and then he blamed himself for Brandon Lee's death because he was he. I suppose he thought that if he hadn't even, if he hadn't created the book in the first fucking place, then you know this wouldn't have happened. But. I mean, clearly it wasn't. Oh, that's not the right way to think about it. No, no, but it it sounds like he's had a very... I I could understand when you're hit with that much tragedy sort of early on and consistently in life, you're going to start to think, fucking hell, is it me? He just sounds like an extremely unlucky guy. Um, That makes sense. And all his pains and create something that's pretty amazing, you know, and lasted the test of time. Yeah, it's pretty classic, but... That's also because it doesn't venture that far out of like the archetypal, you know. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's essentially just a revenge story with. You that, know, that's all it is. Yeah, and the crow and the gothic thing attached. Yeah, I mean, there's. To be honest, there's not. There's nothing new. No. There's no no. There's no novel idea. In this no, story. no, it, it's it's not just one. Where, it's a it's a it's lots of tools to create a superhero, a gothic superhero that goes on a revenge quest. But I suppose because he is, he dies in such a horrible way, and he and he, has, and he watches his girl die in such a hor- horrible way, um, and he has actually died. You just and the way that the villains are depicted, you just feel like he's. You know, completely justified doing absolutely anything, you know. Yeah, and I think that it's necessary to ask the question of what is one supposed to do 
in this kind of situation and what would be correct but i think he said he truly felt it was it was righteous justice correct mm. and um so i may be in the minority here but i don't believe that due process quote unquote that there's anything inherently sacred about it and i don't believe that it's more likely to have just or appropriate results than vigilanteism and people deciding for themselves in small scale what to do right interesting and that might sound strange but look into how look into court cases of important issues and you know watch them which i've done uh in deciding this and you will be astonished by how often they they get it wrong this oh yeah, yeah. nine jury thing yeah so that's yeah. food for thought it's certainly not a perfect system by any means yeah. no and um the movie i i don't think that's in the novel the graphic novel actually which just goes to show you how even after nine years you could still spend 10 years revising a script but in the movie there is a quote the book's fucking full of quotes which i love because it shows yeah. that the guy reads and it shows that he knows what you're thinking about because you've been down the same paths before. I love it. Yeah, it's very, very, very flowery uh, monologues by Eric Driven in the book. Yeah, it's awesome stuff. But in the movie. Sort of guy, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's quoting a lot of stuff, right? And the movie quotes um, Milton, Paradise Lost, when he's killing the car guy, who's yeah. um, white T Bird in the movie. The, yeah. The book has black t-bird right right they based the character on t-bird from the graphic novel they made a character that looked exactly like him and they changed his name so they fiddled all the names around unnecessarily oh, so t-bird is, is tintin in the comic correct and right. but there's another character named t-bird who's a white guy who drives cars okay. Oh, okay but when um so when he's killing movie t-bird the white guy he yeah. quotes milton um, the part where Satan realizes he ain't shit. Right. Which is, my, you know, the favorite, my favorite part of Paradise Lost. It says, abashed the devil stood and felt how awful goodness is. That's it. Great line. Yeah. It's a really good scene really as well. Cool. That's the, uh, the iconic burning crow on the floor visual that's right yeah and that's right and the reason i the reason i brought it up was because i wanted to make the point um about brandon lee's opinion brandon lee's quote that the, that it was justified right that the actions in the in the film are morally justified and they are yeah. and i th think that john milton would say that they are and if you're <laughs> with Milton, I think you're in good company. You were a fan of Big, Paradise. Right. The point is, sorry, I just remembered. The point is, goodness can be can be more frightening than evil. Right. right? Because Brand, Brand, Brandon, um, to, the crow should be understood as an angel. Yeah. Not as a demon. And the fact that he's got black lipstick doesn't mean he's evil right no that's not awesome. it's that's to reflect awesome. his uh, misery he's right paint and there's a... beneath his you know anything but exactly and there's a brilliant part of the graphic novel where he in his full getup interacts with a, a woman i think on the subway and he's really 
to her and kind. <laughs> and she's a little bit surprised, but goes alone. Yeah. Do you remember that? In the book? Yeah. Um, and she's yeah. all like, and just polite as could be, he said to me. And he's like super chill with this lady. Right. I love that part. Yeah, they, they do they do uh, uh, similar things in the film, but they sort of rope it into him, you know, talking to people that he's already met. Yeah, he's he's being like the godfather to this or um, that's, that's to right. this girl, right? The little girl Sarah. Yeah. Um, the the, the I tell you what I liked in the book better was that the motivation for the the bad guys to kill um, Eric and his um girlfriend was like more random like they just happened to be driving past them while that while he was fixing i agree them. it was yeah. it was a mistake to to give to give a real reason i agree. yeah and then and they yeah they they sort of contrive it into the, the, the top dollar owns the building and they want they're asking for something and he doesn't want to give it so. yeah i didn't like that i agree with you 100 percent. and i would dare to say that it shows some yeah, misunderstanding. I, I, I actually oh, missed sorry. that my, my, on my first viewing, and I I assumed that I, I assumed that it was they were throwing the devil's knife thing, and then they'd just gone round to that. They were terrorizing. Like ran, yeah, like yeah. a clockwork, yeah, orange thought, kind of thing, right? Exactly, yeah, and I thought I thought, oh, that that's what they're, they're just that evil, just going around random people's houses and raping and killing them. And that that, that would have made sense. More, yeah, much more impactful. It even, I agree. And it would even would have made more sense because people do that on Halloween. That's a real thing. It's not common, but it That's is sort of like trick or treating, isn't it? Well, it's it is trick or treating. You know yeah. a lot of people trick or treat. Very, very few people murder when they trick or treat, but it it has happened, right? There are reported cases, so it would make sense. But unfortunately, they just made it a um, MacGuffin, which I think was a mistake. Yeah, yeah, it was a mistake. I wonder if I got forced to put that in by the producer. Um, Could be because there's kind of like a, kind of like a, a an unnecessary liberalness to the contrived situation, isn't there? Like, yeah, yeah. You don't want you don't want any of that. I just wanted them to be uh, evil bastards. And they, they they already fit the bill, do you know what I mean? Where the, the, the guy that's um, like T Bird is constantly um, sort of quoting uh, those sort of Paradise Lost or biblical quotes to uh, make him feel like he's working for the devil. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I'll tell you what, I really yeah, I think. Watching it back, that, 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 that it's like um, the crow's a bit. It's actually like it, it works along the same sort of storylines as like a Friday the Thirteenth film, except th this time, like, yeah, the good guy, right? The slasher is the good guy. Yeah, I, I really like that. <laughs> yeah, it's an anti-slasher movie. Yeah, I like it too. Did you watch any of the sequels? No, but I read the I read the comic book version of the sequel. The City of Angels comic book version. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh about? it's the same story except so every crow comic book I have that I know of yeah. is this the same story retold, yeah. which is not necessarily a bad thing, actually. I tell you, I rate this story a lot higher than I used to because as much as the aesthetic appealed to me as a cure listening to again punk yeah. kind of skateboarding, getting in fights guy, um, young man, when I read this at that time as a young yeah. man, I liked it less overall well i thought it was a really cool book and a really cool idea aesthetically and i appreciated the literary references and the music references 
but I thought that it had an irredeemable Achilles heel, which was that he was invulnerable, which complete, which, which takes away the tension of him having to be careful about what he, what he chooses to do. Sure. Right. The reason I was never a big Superman fan. Sure. To be fair. But as you grow up, you realize that bullshit is bullshit and you stop being <laughs> a pedantic bitch. And yeah, no, I understand that though. I think I think the, the, the later on when they sort of introduce well, ah, if you injure or hurt the crow, then you, 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 you sort of Yeah. Eric. So the sequel the sequel remedies that. Yeah. In, a, in an a, a acceptable way. Yeah. So I think it adds to the Crow lore. But the movie's not as much fun to watch because it's not Brandon Lee. Um, no, it's nowhere near as good. But apparently there's another cut um, that the, the, the producers interviewed really, really heavily. Uh, so there's a new ending and there's a bunch of scenes that were taken out. And it wasn't supposed to end in the way that it did. Um, he, oh, what's the guy's name? Ash. The new Eric driving is called Ash. And he, yeah. he is, do, at the end of the, ori the original cut, he was supposed to, he doesn't, he doesn't get to go back to heaven with his son. He, um, he forfeits, he forfeits that somehow. And he's stranded on earth forever. Um, yeah. He's falling in love with that girl and she dies as well. So he's just essentially that I feel like they're setting him up to be a, a constant uh, superhero, or they, at least they tried to. They go, all oh, right, okay. You can never make a sequel to Eric because he's done his job and he's gone. But if we keep this guy on earth, um, yeah, then he becomes spawn, right? He can tell all sorts of stories of him. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I think that's exactly what they were trying to do, but yeah. it didn't work. And it's sort of no, it to my chagrin because I always advocate for mantle passing, right? People with different names having being the same superhero. I think I like the idea because I think yeah. it's silly to have Batman for for sixty consecutive years of right. Bruce Wayne, but. Here we have an example of someone trying to do that, and it didn't really work no. out. You know, no one really and, went for yeah, it. Yeah, because because the nature of the story is that this person has come back. They are. It's like they're in pain for the whole of the 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 movie or the or the comic because they yeah. need to get, they need to get this rage sort of fixed, and then finally they get it fixed, and then they get to go and be with their loved one, right? So by making it a constant, you're taking all that away. <laughs> <laughs> that's so right he's not really going to be emotionally invested in any other quest yeah than that one right yeah so the the obvious thing to do is like oh well tell other stories of people that were in too much pain to to leave the living world you know There's a right I, well, and where i think the other crow stories are are not the crow story i would have written is that they're pretty they're they're always too similar yeah, so, I would have done so. I would try and pick, you've got to try and play with the format now. Mm -hmm. Like you, you, you've, um, but there's this sort of Edgar Allan Poe homage in the in that you, you you grant kind of a priori that the only thing that could make you feel this way, yeah, is the death of your romantic sexual partner. But I disagree. Well, it's his son in the second one, isn't it? It's his son. It's his wife and son. Right? Yeah. So it's kind of I, his I, I, wife, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to think. What would I? Because it, it does appeal to me. Like the, 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 the series as a franchise appeals to me because I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of slack there to do interesting things. Well, I'd there's like a bit of there's a bit yeah. of a Rokan shade to sure. that concept, you know. Yeah, you know, learning to adjust to loss of a loved one and uh, learning to find. But what Rokan does that the, that Eric doesn't is finding Survive. a reason. Right, so finding a reason to live 
a new reason, a different reason to live. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking like, if I were to do one, what, what concept would I go with? Um, and I was thinking um, it could have two, two people. Right, everyone thinks they're right, right? Right. Not everyone's evil. Everybody thinks that they're on the right side of history, yeah? Um, yeah. What would happen if there were two juxtap juxtaposing people that get in a skirmish and, and end up murdering each other? over something and then they both come back you know they're both in pain that when they is die. such a fucking good idea how about if there's two gargoyles because a <laughs> church would have two gargoyles wouldn't it on, my, on each side yeah, yeah, of the yeah. door yeah so how about if we do like Gargoyle twins who are adversaries. And it's sort of ambiguous which one is the good guy and which one is the bad guy. Well, that would be the point, right? You, we, both of these people were in pain, so which so, one? Uh... But my question for you is, do, you have, do I have the green light to fit, play around and see yeah. if I can do a story with the Gargoyle character, or do you want me to do it with the crow character or uh, the... fucking hell man like you, you whatever you i mean i'll be interested to see the crow character but i don't know if that's got legs for you for time right because the, crow the problem is i don't know if we could get permission to do a right. crow story i'd love to write one but i don't oh, know if yeah. we could get permission i i did i did look up the copyright to see if you could do uh i've got an idea a pitch i've got an idea go on we could write it with our character. Yeah. Um, I could do it for the well, as the gargoyle, or if you prefer, we could just make up a different story unrelated. Um, and do tell me what you prefer. Um, and then at any point, uh, subsequently, we could retool it as a crow uh story yeah okay. yeah if man, we, have, if we ever you. got permission any, I, any ideas that i'll come up with you uh, fucking hell you just take them and run with them because cool I thanks give me everything you get give me everything you get but yeah yeah i was, I was just trying to think the same i mean I bet that's the tip of the iceberg if you really wrapped our brains you come up with loads of uh, decent ideas there it is and and uh, you know the, Production companies and sequels, they just never seem to, to, most of the time, never really seem to play with that. It's always the same film over and over again. Yeah. But I, I, think that's a, I think that's a great idea, Max. And by the way, yeah. Um, <laughs> have you ever read, I always ask, have you ever read about the stupidest books that nobody gives a shit about? Have you ever read The Fairy Queen by What's-His-Face? The Fairy Queen? Why, it's my favourite book. No, I've never read The Fairy Queen. Yeah, nobody reads this bullshit. Um, the Fairy Queen is a weird novel. Mm. It's spelled all funny. It's written by a heretic, since that's the word of the day. I forget the guy's name. I'll look it up momentarily. But anyways, it's Knights of the Round Table stories, right? Oh, yeah. With a... With a certain weird religious twit, uh, point of view, right? Yeah. But one of the nice around stories, Table, which I don't know if this character, if this guy made this up or if it's a retooling of a different story. I think it is. I remember reading it somewhere else. Two knights who kill each other. Yeah. And it's kind of the, a similar idea. So I, whatever those two knights' names are, it's kind of the same idea, but then do it at, do it as a crow thing with the coming back to life because i don't think they kill each other or maybe there's two versions one where they realize in time and they're like yeah so, friends and another one where they die and it's supposed to be a lesson like you see don't kill your friend or some something it's similar. interesting because because the way i the white right the way i when i try and come up with ideas <laughs> my my thought process is just simply right 
I need to come up with a story for this aesthetic that I like, enjoy. So that, like the crow. So what what could I take from something that I already love and wrap it in that crow aesthetic, right? What story would fit? And the reason why I came up with that one is because in the uh, late nineties and mid two thousands, there was a series of uh, video games called um, Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver. You heard of this? Yes. Right. Well, it, it, on boy with the scarf. Our boy with the scarf. Yeah, the Soul Reaver. Yeah. Do you remember the story? Yes. It, it's um. It's it's basically Nietzsche mm. philosophy. It's 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 eternal recurrence. Right. But exactly, but the but the, the 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 protagonist that you play in each game, it's always you play as one guy, then you play as another guy, then you go back to the original guy, and then you get, and and these two guys are Cain and um, Raziel, the Soul Reaver, are mortal enemies, um, but you grow attached to both of them uh, in each game, uh, and you learn more about their history, and then in the final game, you play as both characters. Um, and then there's a few scenes where you have to fight each other. And first you fight the fight Kane as Raziel, and then immediately you fight Raziel as Kane. And and you find yourself towards the end of the of the series, you find yourself sort of really rooting for the protagonist and the um, uh, uh, the bad guy, right? Um, so you don't you sort of don't want either of them to lose because they. They've both got these, even though they're both killers, they're both vampires, but they, they, um, they've got these redeeming qualities. And eventually it sort of sorts itself out and they, they come to some uh, um, tragic agreement that works for both of them. Do you remember what happens at the end? Ben? No. I, I so, maybe didn't play that far, to be, oh, far, to be honest. So you know, do you remember that Raziel has the Soul Reaver blade? Yeah. And inside the Soul Reaver blade is a soul, right? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, and and then Raziel gets the ghost of the Soul Reaver blade attached to his hand. And he doesn't know why. And essentially, you find out in the end because there's been a lot of time travel. The soul inside the blade, all along, was Raziel's. Um, so at the end of the story, in order for Cain to beat the big bad, who's like this Aldrich horror, um, HB Lovecraftian creature. He has to murder um, Raziel with Raziel's permission in order to uh, absorb the soul into the reaver and then use that reaver to slay the creature at the end. And then it, essentially it sort of ends with um, Raziel in life originally before they fought, fell out. Raziel was um, Cain's right hand man, his sword. And then by the end of the story, he's literally. Raziel's right His hand sword. sword. Yeah, and they sort of, even though they were mortal enemies, they bond in this way for the good of the area in which they live. Um, so I was like, oh, if you put that into the crow, right, then you, that'd be fucking great. Yeah, if you if you you sort of rooting for two people that you can totally understand uh, where they're coming from, um, it's a it's a different vibe to just a revenge flick, you know. Um, yep. It would be difficult to write, I imagine, because you've you've got to make both of them sympathetic. You leave that to me. I well, yeah, I'm sure you could do it. I don't. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't even know how to start. But yeah, but that that idea. I like that idea. I like I that really idea. Would, I would recommend those games. It's got the best voice acting ever, man. I can't, how though that never became an animated movie or a movie is beyond me. It's absolutely brilliant. It's a so, great story. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it's very... Um, it's already in line with the kind of story we we, re we are telling. Yeah. Some of the um, the dialogue in it, it reminds me of uh, some of the dialogue that we get to, uh, get to read. I need to have a look at that. I need to have a look at that. I think there, there's... I think there could be some... There could be a lot to mine from that story. Yeah, if you go onto YouTube, you, you can see all of the cutscenes together, and it's essentially just tells the story. 
I think that's worth doing. I think it's over like four or five games. So it's like an hour, maybe, maybe a couple of hours. Uh, okay. Yeah, loving that as a as um, as a sixteen year old, it blew my mind. That sounds really cool. Yeah, I've never seen it repeated either. Like the idea of the two two people that you sort of rooting for to succeed and fail at the same time. Hmm. The, I mean, it sounds almost like a deja vu to hear that, but. I'm having trouble remembering any a story quite like that. Yeah, there's a lot of time travel wrapped up in it as well. So there's all there's all sorts of like I know a story like that. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. So, so travel, Raz, yeah, yeah, Raziel at one point he 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 he's the head of his clan of vampires, but he he gets murdered and he comes back as the Soul River. But when he comes back, um, his clan he's um group of vampires that he sort of ordered around and watched over they've they've all broke it's thousands of years in the future and they've, they've all broke off into their own clans and one of the things about the vampires in this universe is that every 100 years or 50 years they go into a state of hibernation and then come out changed so raziel grows wings um uh Cain is always the first one to go into change and uh they sort of fall out because Raziel goes into change before his master and Cain gets pissed off and throw, casts him into this pit. But Raziel ends up going to the future, thousands of years into the future. And, and all of his, his comrades, they've, they've evolved so much that they've changed into things that don't even resemble humanoids anymore. Some right. of them are crazy. But they've got a, a, their offspring of vampires sort of inherit all of their gifts and whatever it is that they've become. Yeah, no, that's a really cool system. Yeah. Yes, and true video game fashion, you've got to hunt each one down and kill them, you know. Right. Which which translates really well to comic books as well and anime. Yeah, yeah, it does. The, the hunting down the treasures. I, I like that. I fuck with that. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. A story. A story where two mortal enemies kill each other and are both granted resurrection because yeah. they both make a strong case that they were justified and they need have important work to do yeah I, I, yeah you can which actually... incorporates an element of treasure hunting and yeah and you could throw you, know, you, you could throw some interesting religious stuff in there you could throw in some spawn stuff in there you know be a yeah. nice a bit of crow, a nice mismatch of uh, cool ideas and stuff. Yeah, I like that. So, what if, what if they needed to something like Dragon Balls, where where they each needed to build some machine? There's parts of of something that you have to put together, or maybe a web. I don't know, either a weapon or something. Doesn't matter, but does matter but i don't know yet but they have to put something together and they each uh without knowing the other is after the same thing get the, the dif different pieces of it and that's how they find out that the other has also come back to life right okay. because they eventually track each other down trying to f to get the pieces that the other one has yeah and then all and then they each conclude that what I have to do now is kill him again to get the pieces. Yeah, but you've got, so you've, got to, you've got to complicate that um, decision, and the complications got to come from their previous relationship, right? Ooh, yes. So if you had the, if you had a crow at, with the two, these two characters and they kill each other, but if that if they were lovers, that would make it. Um, that would make it a different story that we are more <laughs> oh, well i just mean the, the, there's there's other emotional things to get over for the characters rather than just well, i've killed each other and now i've got to kill each other again the like my the idea that i had was so like in in soul reaver the the emotional sort of issue that they've got is that they're no kane and raziel they don't hate each other 
they're just mortal enemies because of because of circumstances and originally raziel is pursuing cain to kill him because he blames him for his original death and a few other things but every time they sort of meet cain sort of cryptically tells him that these are things that he needed to do for the good of uh nosgoth which is where they live and raziel and he's and so raziel starts to think that oh maybe there's something else going on here because what he's saying makes sense but he doesn't know the he does he doesn't know the full picture of his destiny yet so they and they sort of become friends they help they help each other out in other situations so by the time they clash there's like this other level of um friendship sort of um stressed friendship and respect that they've got their their, their allies but they're also mortal enemies and that's what made it really really interesting i think because they could empathize with each other it, you can empathize with both of them I see. does that make sense yeah i was missing something important which is that they not only do does one empath empathize with them both but indeed they do empathize one with the other yeah so that the, the, the there's got to be like this battle that both they're both going through like an internal psychological battle about the right thing to do as opposed to how they feel about each other and that's that's what sort of overcomplicates the the situation do you do did you learn like i ask because not everyone does and, and that's and not everyone needs to but did you learn like specific grammar in, in school of like how to form sentences and what to call different parts like do you know what a complex sentence is versus a com a compound sentence no like really nerdy I yeah. thought it, but i didn't listen in school most people <laughs> well in, in in america they don't even teach this in schools to be yeah, okay. so this is this is some heavy duty nerd shit. um but yeah there's such a thing as a compound sentence and there's also such a thing as a complex sentence and there's also also such a thing as a compound complex sentence which has both so this is a compound complex uh a conflict <laughs> because yeah. this is this is this is this is man versus man versus self versus self yes it's compound complex <laughs> yeah. and that's what you want that's what you want to do with um to make uh, an adversarial um story interesting is okay. it, uh, i think a lot of people miss this especially when it comes to uh, not that i know how to write i don't know how to fucking write i just know what i like and i know what concepts are okay. I can recognize concepts within good writing um max what if we have um we've already created two characters right i'm trying to decide and, and I still don't know one way or the other. I'm trying to decide if these characters should be used for the story or if, if we need to come up with different characters. Because, I would, I, you know, we created already the yeah, idea. Tell me. I would write the story and then just see how you feel about because it might end up developing to a different character. Just let the story dictate. Okay. Well, well here's what I was thinking. Approach, the most honest approach to... Uh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Well, it just occurs to me, and I just something that it doesn't necessarily belong. You might end up losing parts of the concept that you. So uh, you're telling me I gotta kill a baby? Not you gotta kill a baby, yeah. Okay, I can do that. I've done it. I've done it before. I've done it before. Well, look, and I'll if, do it again. If you can do it and and you can make it work, then yeah. But if you everybody knows this, like you, you, inside you know honestly, right? And sometimes you can. Uh, might mishmash things in because you want it there as opposed to it uh, making up its own mind okay but one more question sure. just to be a real son of a bitch yeah. um what about if what if we did some kind of thing where we had this gargoyle guy and then what if uh because you said lovers, so I'd already well, thought about. Potentially, they don't have to be. Potentially, they don't have yeah. to be. But I was thinking about the stone dog gargoyle mm. as being female. Okay. Because I think it would be cool to name her Averroin, 
which is the name of the fictional city based on uh, a vampire infested alternate France, right? By yeah. Arthur Clark Ashton Smith, one of my one of my favorite writers. And so I I think that Averroin would be is a cool character as female uh, dog, guard yeah. stone dog, right? You know what I'm talking about. But what if it was a human being that got turned to into this dog statue? Like ghosts. And then there's a uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. And then like because she she's the sort of sidekick to the gargoyle superhero. Oh, I see. That's cool. So that there could be like a and it wouldn't even have to be lovers, but it'd be fun if it was like a female to male, maybe daughter and father. And yeah, yeah. Or I'm, I'm not fine with all of those um, uh, relationship concepts, you know. Okay. I thought the one with the parent and the child was, would have been good for the crow if they'd done it properly. Well, I think the idea of um, a simul kill where they both are resurrected is a, is a great idea because it plays with that idea of opposing points of view that are both justifiable. Yeah, and, and it also- Which is a lot saying, of fun. It keeps saying that love is stronger than death, right? So as long as you, when you die, you feel like you're really in pain, you're losing something. that. So that could be anyone. It doesn't have to be someone that's um, fine. Just in, it could be some uh, an evil cunt that you know really loves, really loves uh, his life, and it's really painful to leave. You know, so you get you get a crow that returns to his life, who's essentially an evil. It doesn't say whether the crow only carries the souls of the good. It just says the souls of the in pain, which is, which is a completely different thing. I see. Is it it's a power? Is it pain or love or, or? Well, in the in the original, it says sometimes a, a, um, a soul's in so much pain that the, the crow brings it back, and in the second one, it says love is is stronger than death. Which so, one do you like better? I like love. Yeah, I like love. I mean, they can essentially be they they can both be interpreted in completely different ways. You just think of it. You're in, right. Yeah. So it, it doesn't necessarily matter. They're, they're sort of saying the same thing, but love, love is the one that sounds better. It kind of comes people, down to... Uh, people that love things, you know, and don't want to be parted from them. If this... If, if, um, if, we, if, we, if we make this... If we come up with a story and we make this... this uh, we make this book, mm. the way I would pitch it to Ethan Van Skyver to read it the free copy that i sent him would be that it's kind of like green lantern because you have to you know the power the supernatural power is derived from the person's emotion and willpower that's cool right? yeah yeah i suppose it is yeah dude. i'm gonna get my lighter once. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go and get a few things as well. I'll be two minutes. I've got... Uh, play the intro. No, just kidding. No, no, you're right. I've got um, I've got a thing. Okay. Oh, great. Now I want to stay and watch it. Where the fuck is it? There we go. Be right back. newbie i can truly be moody i could have played the fucking grinch in the movies i've been a part-time shadow cat part-time that is not a guy that i would ever want to try to battle rap snap pop a pop mind fried to a crisp make an mc into a wide-eyed lunatic
you El profesor is in the house, let me teach you I could defeat you with two hands tied And have you waking in the hospital like, who am I? And who are you? Who are they? What is this? You wouldn't believe how someone react to this shit The mind slips, slips, slipping, speaking in tongues Sly Inc. GVA, that's how we get it done, uh That's how we get it done, uh That's how we get it done, uh That's how we get it done, Sly Inc. GVA, that's how we get it done, uh You know, you know what's funny is my lighter was in my pocket the whole time. Oh, shit. And I was like looking all in my jacket like an idiot. <laughs> what an asshole. What do you recommend so far, bro? That looks good. Yeah. It's very uh, Lynn Carter. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Doing acid gave, gave me so many ideas about like meta textual um, postmodern things that you could do with stories. Yeah. Like, uh, have you ever read Kurt Vonnegut? Mm, no. Okay. Um, oh, man. Slaughterhouse Five, I think, is the one Normies read. Which one? Slaughterhouse Five. Uh, I've heard of that, but I've not read it. Okay. Slaughterhouse so sounds um, very. Sounds weird. metal, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's more like, oh, bad thing. Why bad thing? I don't like bad thing. Maybe it's God's fault. It's kind of like that, but um. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but it's a good. He's a really good writer. Um. Wrong people make the best. Ask Nietzsche. But um, the funny thing about, okay, but not that book. He has another book called Breakfast of Champions, who's, which is sort of weird. It's sort of like Finnegan's Wake. It's hard to understand. It's hard to remember. But one thing I remember about Breakfast of Champions is that there are paragraph, multiple paragraph progressions, even full pages, wholesale repleted in the book. And it has the effect of causing you, unless you are forewarned, hmm. to question your sanity briefly while you're reading the book. At the precise moment when the protagonist goes insane. Oh, right. Okay. So it's re a really clever way to interact with your reader by repeating text which is a no-no in writing right yeah um using the format in a in, a, in a, a novel way right yeah yeah um, i always I appreciate that. that alan moore used to do that with comics and there's a few guys that have done it with games as well have uh, sort of broken the fourth wall um we do it with, with some of the panel ideas that we've got in Roken, but yeah, I, I always appreciate that. Yeah. I do too. Uh, you feel more involved and invested. I don't know why I brought that up, but... Uh, but I like it. Fuck no, it's mad. I used to play this game called uh, Metal Gear Solid. I know you've heard of it. Um, and in the original game, you can't beat this boss because he's psychic and he can guess who moves before you do. So every time you throw a punch, he blocks it. Um, and for ages, I was trying to get past it. And what you have to do is take the PlayStation out of the Player 1 port and put it in the Player 2 port. 
And then when you play, you can't read your mind anymore. And I remember that blowing my mind. Oh, you can do things. You can do clever things with uh, formats. Cool, isn't it? That's awesome. Yeah. What's that game called? Uh, Metal Gear Solid. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, it's a great game. You, I think you'd really like that. I mean, it's very, it's really fucking overcomplicated, but there are there are some good ideas in in the game. Psycho Mantis. Psycho Mantis. That's the man. <laughs> it's got like a gas mask. Up. Okay. Yeah, there was a few in that game. Um, there was one where you have to give this guy a code and he keeps saying it's on the back of the CD case and you're like checking your inventory and you have you do have a CD case in there and you sort of get it up, you're checking the back. There's nothing there, but it's on the back of the CD case that you get with the game. It's, it's right there. Fuck yeah. Yeah, if you can break the fourth wall a little bit or sort of, you know, push, push against it. And get get the the player or the reader to sort of interact in that way. You've got them invested in the story a lot more. It's exciting. I agree the, for the reader. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's some examples of people doing stuff like that. Well, I mean, the Princess Bride, right? Hmm. They kind of did that because the movie pretends that there's this book, sure, yeah. The Princess Bride, and there is, it, but it it tries to get view, people watching the movie to actually wonder if there really was a book that this that it was based on called sure. The Princess Bride. Yeah, and there isn't, but. Um, they kind of tease you because they say like, oh, if you if you write a not there wasn't a book, but there was there, but there was a story, a never published story that the screenplay mm -hmm. was based on, uh, that the screenplay was a um, adaptation of. Yeah, yeah. Complete, unabashed, bold faced lie, right? That's not oh, true. really. But if you wrote to an address, they would send you a copy of it to read. Huh. Right. There he so is. That's nice. pretty cool. Yeah. Oh no, th this is. I wouldn't have been playing Metal Gear Solid at, at that point. I've, I've, I never. Nintendo sixty four and PlayStation one. That's as far as I went. That's maybe that's, that's PlayStation one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Even still, I was only just playing the 2D Metal sure, Gear. Sure. I like that more. Um, I don't have the neurons for 3D um, first-person shooting, which is weird because I'm I'm a good shot in real it's life. Like, it's like a third person. Okay. It's a third person. And, and it's only sort of – it's only 3D – illusionary really it's essentially sort of a top down but it's just done with 3d graphics but i know what you mean i know you don't oh, okay know. i see i see what you're saying it might be more fun than i'm imagining in that case but it's um yeah it's 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 an in uh it's an interesting story concept i sort of managed to weld espionage and the x-files and ghosts and futuristic sci-fi all into one <laughs> one package it's uh it's it's a crazy crazy story on the on the on the face of it when you see it, it just looks like an army game but it's far from it wow wow so i've really missed out on a lot of great stories because I didn't play enough video games. Nah, the thing is that about that now is that you can just you can just uh, go to a, a YouTube uh, video and then just get the rundown. If, if, <gasps> uh, 
if all the story, if all you're into is the story, is pretty much every decent game with a good story has got a, a rundown of that story and it's done in the boat. But that's not what a real one would do. A real one would earn the story. But... Yeah, it would depend. Well, this is it. I have to do those sorts of things nowadays because I don't, I don't have the time that I had in my teens to uh, piss away playing games for eight hours. Eight, and if you no. play games, that's fine. Like, uh, I just I have other things I need to be getting on with. I think yeah, my yeah, hardcore hours we yeah, fell into my hardcore gaming days are over. Mine too. Um, so I just live off the memories of decent games, which is uh, good enough, I think, because from what I have seen of the plethora of new games out, most of them are shit. You know what I do sometimes? Uh, yeah. I look up games that i never beat yeah to see how they carry on yeah i do i think my favorite game of all time is a game called bioshock and i, I liked it so much i got the uh i got the logo tattooed on uh, okay that's a first person game and you 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 start yeah hands and you've got like these chains on your now, so this is a great fourth wall break, right? So you've got these chains on your wrist throughout the game. You're like, well, have you got these chains tattooed on your wrist? And, and sort of you go through all these um tasks and the, the shit that you normally do in a game. And then later on in the game, you find out that you've been um psychologically programmed and um to do the bidding of this a certain person. Now, this certain person in the game, uh is the guy that's giving you your missions right but he, every time he asks you to do something he says would you kindly do it and you sort of find out that's the code word that anybody has to say um for you to just mindlessly do something well you've been performing all these missions as far as you being the game is concerned willingly or you think you have but then you find out that the game's been uh lying to you and there's a great line in it that was um uh, a man chooses and a slave obeys so does it turn out that the player yeah, is you, the no you as the player are the one that's being controlled and being you control the missions willingly but you think right. you have but, uh, <gasps> you know what I'm saying but the character's been, um, uh, been every time you do a mission someone said kindly do this yeah yeah and you have like a flashback where the guy that's asking goes would you kindly go over there please would you kindly sit down please would you kindly get this mission done please and you've just been doing it as a gamer willingly, but like the character has been has been um, hypnotized into taking these orders. And you sort of halfway through the game, you break out, and then the second half of the game, you, you're like you're like this free version of, the, of who you originally were, and you've got way more abilities because of it. It's really really good. Blew me away, and the aesthetic's brilliant as well. But it's like a 1950s um, uh, city underwater. Um, where the civilizations have been separated for long enough that um, all of the um, basically it, it's a civilization that's caught between capitalism and um, what's the opposite? What's, what, what's the word am I looking for? Like tankies. Socialism. Socialism, yeah. And they want to do their own thing. And their own thing is basically we just do what we want and we just push science as far as we can with no limits. And um, we reap all the benefits in our community. And they eventually be all become addicted to um, altering themselves genetically um, in all sorts of ways. And you have to use these genetic alterations um, to sort of defeat some of the enemies. So there's the, also there's like beauty ones, but there's ones like you can. There's like one in particular that you can stick into your arm, and it makes your your arm change into like all these holes appear in your arm, and you can fire all these bees out your arm. But you can alter yourself throughout the the game. Plasmids, they're called. But it's, yeah, it's like this 1950s society that has become addicted to genetic experimentation on themselves. So they're all fucking nuts. That's Sounds like the. Sounds like the Meta Barons a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit, yeah. It's a little bit like that, yeah. They're fucking with themselves all the time. 
Yeah, self self mutilation, right? Yeah. The Meta Barons, that should be a show. Bro. It's fucking crazy, that is. A friend of mine told me that he had trouble dispelling disbelief mm. with the Meta Barons because of the monarchy. Right. F space futuristic monarchy. You didn't buy that. Have you read Dune? Uh, yeah, right? like, I, I, I buy the monarchy. Yeah, what are you talking about. Of course, there's going to be space monarchy. It's, it's an odd. It's an odd. Uh, it's an odd read. Because, like in his mind, monarchy is an antiquated thing that we uh, have grown out of. So, in the future, there's no way it could come back. But I disagree. Oh, I, yeah, I totally disagree. Uh, ideology comes in many forms and it repeats yeah man power absolute power is absolute power that's yeah. it like, yeah 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 things uh, there is only one lord of the rings and he does not share food no or weed <laughs> or power mm. Mm -hmm. Nice one, dude. Yeah, Bioshock sounds really interesting. But yeah, that's the kind of thing. Um, that's the kind of thing that would be perfect to start incorporating into PD. Yeah, because. It's not going to have a player, but it's going to have someone reading for the, the player, like if sure. they were part of the script, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Viewer can be part of it. Hey, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What time is it where you are? It's 3.30 p.m. That's the other thing about the chrome I realized when I rewatched it was how good the soundtrack is. Oh my god. The cure. Yeah. Nine inch nails. I will appreciate this then. I've got I've got both of those on here. Who the fuck are you, mate? There you are. What on the stream you are? Yeah, I've uploaded, I've uploaded the cure and nine inch nine. Oh, They're the two best songs. Now it's I don't know if it was just the British version, but I remember going out and buying this album, right? For that song specifically. And it wasn't on the fucking album. It wasn't? No. Uh, what the fuck? It seems to be now, but like the original but the original release, it wasn't on there. I was fucking good. That was like 1998 or something, so yeah. It's an internet. <gasps> no way. Yeah. That's just, that's bad because the cure is from England. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was on the US at least, it was the first track. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw. Holy shit, that sucks. It, yeah, yeah. I wonder if they'd sign something that it couldn't be released over it. I know they rewrote the track for the film or something like that. No, they wrote the track for the film. Right, they wrote it, yeah. Like, originally, that was the only, right. that was the reason for the track. Yeah, so maybe a distribution thing there. Well, Robert Smith was very keen on being on that soundtrack because he was aware and appreciative of James O'Barr as a fan. Oh really? Oh, yeah, because he, he 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 puts lyrics from the song "The Hanging Garden" in in the book. Right. And and so they were like originally they were like, can we use "The Hanging Garden" for um, 
for the movie. But then there was talk, I don't remember if this was Robert Smith's idea, but somebody said like, it doesn't really fit, because it's such an old song and the style is not really on brand with the movie. Yeah. And so Robert Smith said, I'll do you one better. I'll write you a song for the movie because the cure still exists in 1994 and we sound way different compared yeah. to how we did in 1982, you know? Yeah. And that, and then this was the result and this song, it's at. It's a fucking great song. Man. Yeah, it is. And I really, really like that. Um, I really like this version of the cure, right? Yeah. This would be the uh, would have been the same lineup that did the album Wish. Right. Which was really cool because um I think it's Coral Compton. Yeah. No, this was Perry Bamonte. Perry Bamonte doing the lead guitar. So all that like all that stuff like which is so yeah. so typical of the way they sounded at that time. Yeah. That's all thanks to Perry Bamante. Pretty underrated member for a little while. Sure. Yeah, I, I forget uh, exactly when it was just him, because there's times when it was Pearl Thompson, sort of like a it's sort of like a tanning off the torch, and there's a little while where they were both in the band yeah. which is something that happened a lot in the cure that that was the way with their original bass guitar player before they got simon gallup but anyways yeah that's Perry Demonte. it's great oh, yeah yeah i grew up with them with the cure and early cure and flesh mode so I, I, i'm much older brother and sister so when i was a little kid that all of their uh, teenage bands were for those but uh, that ended up being my taste as well. Me too. Sort of latched on to. Yeah, there were there were the cure lyrics in in the crow and there were also joy vision lyrics. Yes. Yeah, I'll forget the vision. The classics then, the classics but Are the Cure still together now? Yes. Oh, right, yeah. Yes, they are. They're one of the longest surviving bands, and they're meant to be putting out a new album, which would be extraordinary. Oh, really? When was the last one? 2014. Oh, wow. And that album has grown on me. I wasn't too keen on it at first. Yeah. But that was just because I liked the one before it so much more. So I, I would kind of liked, I kind of wanted them to end on a high note. And also because they named the album The Cure, which they'd never done before. Yeah. So it was sort of, I interpreted it as a, a farewell album. Right, so you thought it was like their last hurrah and you were disappointed with it. Well, I mean, I was glad to have another album, but I didn't think it was anywhere near as good. Right, the follow-up. Yeah. I feel like that with Depeche Mode, I... I... Oh, excuse me, 2008. No, I don't know why I thought 2008. Oh, that's been a long while then, hasn't it? Long time, yeah. Shit. That's odd, man. I wonder. I wonder how much uh, how much music they're making that doesn't make it to albums. I feel like if they had, well, maybe not. Maybe I sang it correctly because I want to say if they had it, songs, they'd release them. But I know I've heard Robert Smith say that there was material not used on 413 dream that they've rewritten and right. they are now are now happy with right. that it would be part of it would, of an uh, of a new new album but that never happened hmm. 
They still tour though. Yeah. I wonder if it's legal issues with members who wrote the songs not being in the band anymore. That could, could be. be. There's always something wrong yeah. about that, isn't it? Yeah, so maybe the songs exist and, and they can't actually release them. Yeah. yeah. That's happened before. Yeah, it's happened a bunch, isn't it? Guns and Roses went through a bunch of shit like that. And, uh, Do you like Guns and Roses? Some. Yeah, they're okay. Um, it's just really funny because they're the number one most favorite band of all time forever in Colombia. Oh, really? It's just weird. Well, it is considering our, because I didn't like a lot of material. Right. Uh, three, there's only got three proper albums, isn't there? But you, you don't, you say the words rock and roll to any Colombian. Guns N' Roses. Man, and you have a 75% chance that he'll mention Guns N' Roses. Like, within the next half hour, at least. I used to really like them when I was a kid. Sorry? I used to really like them when I was like a lot younger. Like really, I was really. I was like a kid. Yeah. yeah, I like them. I just don't know why it's the favorite band forever. Catchy nine, probably. You know why? Because um, when they were at the peak of their heyday, they came to Bogota. Oh, uh, really? In in November, and it rained. <laughs> Everyone's uncle has a story about how, did you know that in English, November rains significa when it rains in November. And they, it was raining in November. And I was there, and I remember. Whoa. So I think that might have a lot to do with it. <laughs> More than you might imagine. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that story a thousand times. Shit, they are big. Uh, I did see them in concert once. That would be that would be a good concert. I tell you why it was. I tell you the main reason why it was good. I went to um, um, a festival called uh, a rock festival called Download Festival, and I saw the Prodigy. Um, DJ Penn. Yeah, the prodigy there. <laughs> What's the prodigy? Is that a band? Yeah, you, never of, you never heard of the prodigy? Not even. I started. I'm closed minded. I, I bet you've heard it. It's been, they've been in loads of movies. Um, okay. I saw them, and, um, and then directly opposite stage was the Guns N' Roses stage, so I saw them and then I went to the That's uh, awesome. Roses right there, yeah. Was that a festival? Yeah, Download, it's a rock festival in England called Download Festival. England does festivals good. They do, they do them all the fucking time. They do good, they do good festivals, man. Yeah. We had a couple. I saw, um, I saw the, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. AFI, Crystal yeah. Castles, oh. Vampire Castle. Weekend, and the Pixies and the Red Hot Chili Peppers on the same night. Wow. Or was it the Killers? Uh, well, I went. Still I went. Ride. I went two years. One year the. The Killers headlined one year, the Red Hot Chili Peppers headlined. I forget which bands were which year, but sure. a lot of good bands. Yeah, they're all good lineups, though. But then that was like it. They, they had, Columbia did a good job with these once a year festivals for a bit, and then they kind of fell off with uh, who they've been booking. Yeah, the Brits seem to love, I love music festivals. Yeah, maybe they weren't profitable enough, or maybe they wouldn't be any, maybe the currency depreciating doesn't yeah. give them the same pull that they used to have with the Van Dyming. Well, 
Right, so the next, the next page, well. Uh, this is Nine Inch Nails, right? Yeah. They also did the Dead Souls cover, which I like more than the Joy Division. Oh, really? Yeah. Because of the vocals, right? Yeah. And I'm not one of these guys that doesn't like Ian Curtis' vocals, because I do very much, but... I just identify more with the with the emotion in Trent Reznor's. Yeah, I, I like um, what was the one of Knowledge Niles that um, fuck. it always it got covered and it's always in movies. Um, did it, did it hurt. Oh yeah, John, Johnny Cash covered that. Yeah, and I like the Nine Inch Nails version better. Yeah, me too. But that was a Nine Inch Nails song in the in the first place. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, yeah, I think a lot of people think it was Johnny Cash. Well, I think a lot of people prefer the Johnny Cash, even yeah. if they don't go. So I, I like to give Nine Inch Nails their due by saying I prefer the Dead Souls version. Right, I, I genuinely prefer the, the, the version of her. I, I heard, weirdly, I heard the Johnny Cash version first. I didn't get into Nile's Nails till much later on. And then when I heard the, the Nile's version, I was like, I think I like And you were like, who's this stupid cowboy faggot? And then you heard Nile's Nails. <laughs> I like the Johnny Cash I understand. He has a very, very distinctive voice, doesn't he? Um, yeah. But it's still, like, Trent Reznor's song just sounds better coming out of Trent Reznor. I like Trent Reznor a lot. Yeah. Like, if you turn off all the sound, if you could turn off every sound and just have some total silence, yeah, I bet you would still hear Trent Reznor scream in, in the back of your subconscious somewhere. Yeah, probably. Ah! It's, uh, <laughs> building up. Um, give me a moment. Okay. Is he gonna play the Be Right Back song again? We can only use that once per episode. Which means that I have to carry the show by myself. So a little bit about me. I want to be a writer, or maybe a painter, I don't know, maybe both. Dude. I don't really want to be a painter. Let's see here. Has he got the... No, I don't think so. What's this? He hasn't got, he hasn't got the Dead, Dead Souls song, is what I was going to say. What's this now? This is called Vengeance. There's a track here called Night Driving. I don't know if Max uploaded this or if Night Driving is part of the... Let me get, this, get rid of this for a second. <laughs> It looks like night driving is part of the application of the streamyard application. Let's listen to night driving. If it's not that night call by what's his face to, from Drive, then I'll be disappointed. It's not. Yeah. Ooh. Sorry. No like. Like uh. that. I think it's part of the StreamYard thing. Yeah, it is. It's this one. Yeah, and it. Ooh, 
fun. So I take my Colombian wife out to to club with my friends, and we hear yeah. music like this, and like most people are on MDMA, and <laughs> and she's not into it, and she's like, she doesn't say anything, but then afterwards she's like, that doesn't count. You did not take me out dancing. All right. That was not dancing. <laughs> what did she want to dance to? <laughs> Fucking Stop. salsa, um, merengue, vaginato. Bro, you know. Yeah, proper dancing. You know. Not dancing mong- with rules. Which yeah, is not monging out to some uh, repetitive beats, bro. Right. She doesn't like that. <laughs> but I like that. I like it as well. Yeah, dude. We'll get up to a bit of that. I, I've, I've always wanted to go out in England. I well, want to know what it's like. Well, uh, yeah. Um, is there so, is there clubbing light? Because like in the United States and also in Latin America, there's sort of a whole spectrum of ways and styles and intensity. It's three as far as I know. You go to the pub, you have, I know out of the pub, you go clubbing like towny clubs, which is basically, right. you know, boozing and dancing until like a proper clubbing clubbing is you dance music with uh, your MDMA. Right. Which can last days, you know. Session. Okay. MDMA for days. Mm. I, um, I mean, I could introduce you to <laughs> a bunch of people that will help you along your way if you want to do it. Nah. Too, uh, too much for me, man. Maybe just do the same amount. Allegedly, I'm joking, but not really. But yes, I am. Uh... Do the same amount that I always do. That would be probably better. Which is none, right? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Can you get the script? Okay, so here is the script. Do you want me to share the script or something like that? Yeah, yeah, just read me through the part that I'm on, really. When, when right, let, me, meets. let me find you. So where are we going? Let's, let's chat about where we're going to the page after this. Okay. If you would like. Hmm. This is, almost What's this? is this 23? Don't recall. It's when Stelios essentially Roken shows Stelios, you know, what's happened, and then Stelios takes his helmet off and bows with his soldiers. Takes his helmet off. Yeah, and then um, page twenty-three. Yeah, and then Roken gives him the sword. Right? How is it worded there? Just, just trying to think how I would, how I'm going to draw it. Uh, da, da, close up of Avenger's body. 
direct frontal view of stelios, except arcanosis, helmets. Helmets back on. Yep. Broke on hands, sword. Right. Okay. Two one of stelios men. Broke on lights a torch. With magic, you will need fire for that. Broke on hands, torch to Stelios' men. Oh, I said that twice, which was a mistake. Um, so I meant to say in the second one, uh, Rokon, um, Stelios' man gives the sword to Stelios. And then on the next page, oh no, at the bottom of this page, which might need two pages for it, yeah. Stelios tries the sword, right? That's why so Rokon gives him the torch and the sword. I bet instead of even giving him a torch, he he the, the end of his staff clicks it. You know, like um his dad does to the handle. He does it with his staff? No, he, he doesn't he sort of lights the candle, doesn't he? And then, and then right. over the I'll do the voices. Hello? It's, uh, it's your doctor, Ben. You've got an STD. <laughs> Yo, it was, it was, uh, uh, um, A junk call, like a sell sell me a, a different bank uh, account. Call. But I had to I had to answer because I'm expecting a package, so I, I thought it might have been that. No worries. Is it a big package? Yeah. Imagine if Rob was here. Yeah. Yeah, he'd probably have a dildo out by now. I think. Yeah, <laughs> big pocket. So what were you telling me? Do you remember? Uh. No. Can our viewers put it in the comments? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Instead of handing him a torch, because oh, yeah. he doesn't have, because I haven't drawn him with a torch, because he's not he's not wandering around with it. Um, he's he's got, got a torch, has he? Yeah. Yeah, but he's got his staff, and he's got the oh, magic and the fire. Yeah, so he could just click his fingers and then, and then hold it to the... On the, on the bit where he says you'll need fire when yeah. you draw a, um, a panel with him holding the staff with it just bursting into flames. Oh, that's way better. Yeah. 100% yes. Okay. But um, just make one thing clear, and I will write you this to confirm. All right. The sword, the fire comes out of Rokon's body. Okay. To light the staff. Okay. It does not come out of the staff. Okay. Very important. So it jumps from his body to the staff. Yes. Okay. Uh, duly noted. And the reason for that is something that I've just written, as in yesterday. Okay. Which is about, because I was having a look through a once over of the novel. Mm. And I was at the bit with Jonic. Okay. And I realized um, he's using magic. Yeah. But he's using these shrunken voodoo heads to do his magic, right? Mm -hmm. He needs something else. For the magic to work. If he didn't have these things, he wouldn't be able to do magic. So I want to separate like the Ramos, the Ramosi magic with this whole wizard religion. You don't need anything else. It comes out of your own body. Yeah, it comes from within, as opposed exactly. to as a fact. Yeah. It comes from only you, right? Not not a trinket or a shrunken head or something else. Sure, right? sure. So that's that's cool. This is really great because I've been I've been feeling guilty for not publishing the Rokon novel because I've had it finished for some time. But 
the thing is, the more I see of the the more I see the story come to life visually in your drawings, yeah, the more cool ideas come to me to add to the to, to the events that are already taken place. Yeah. So there's a really good example of this. Uh, okay, so you know Akira? Yeah. Do you know what was made first, the film or the comic book? Oh, my God. I guess the comic book. No. They wow. were made at the same time. <gasps> like Daft Punk and Kanye West did Stronger. Yeah. So he started the comic book, and then in between starting and finishing, he made the film, right? And making the he says making the film helped him uh, revisualize how he was going to finish the comic book. And there's a lot of characters he put into because the film's a condensed version of the story, right? So there's a lot of characters that he put in the film that you only see for a few seconds. That whilst drawing them, he was like, "Oh, I can make an actual character out of this when I finish the book." So. Um, they're inconsequential in the film, but in the book they have these, you know, huge, huge parts. Um, so the yeah, the creating of the film informed uh, the the book, um, which is essentially what what you're saying, really, right? Isn't it? It's um, that is what I'm saying. Yeah, so I'm it. glad I haven't released the novel because I continue to augment it and to add to the world world. Right. And I think that will come across as well. Like the, the film, even though most most people think the film came second and it's not as good as the comic book, uh, and they'd probably be right on that second part, but but it's still revered. It's still a really a revered... Um, uh, the books are revered more, but the, 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 the movies, like, it's still got a cult following. And I think that's because um, instead of it just being a flat-out, a copy of something that was finished like the passion for the project was still there the creative passion because he hadn't finished the book itself yet and um, so they melded into each other really well i mean it, it might be a good approach to um you know potentially adding or improving your work you know well it certainly assuages my guilty conscience about it because i feel like the result I might need to do like a, a simultaneous release. You need to release the book. We, we, we need to release the book. Yeah, we, 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 but like it might, it might line up almost with the same time that the book that the that we fulfill the comic. Yeah. yeah. Be yeah because I'm still changing it because of a lot of of a lot of it's because of ideas that I got from looking at the images. So I'm just making it, I'm just polishing it and making it a little bit. See, this is, in, in my world, and I know not everyone's like this, but like this is my idea of a proper a proper collaborative um, endeavor is that you let each other's ideas bleed into each other and, and let each other take them and do what they're best at doing with instead of being restrictive about your work. Uh, I really appreciate that about this partnership. I think it's it's having a great effect on the book. Yeah. We both have room to sort of flex our creative muscles, which is great. And I know not, not every team wants to work that like that, but um for me, if it if it's a collaborative effort, that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> you know you know the idea uh, like the etymology of the word genius mm. is, is like a mathematical concept of what's known in modern parlance as an imaginary number, okay. meaning that um, when you collaborative units are uh, in harmony, the sum of them or the whole, the total, if you put them together will be greater than the sum of the parts. Right. So, by working together, we're able to make a book that's better than, uh, it's more than twice as good as what we could make on our own, right? Because it's not yeah. just me plus you. It's yeah. the third it's thing some of its that, Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree, man. I agree. 
Yan na. Do them inks, man. Yo, what do we call that animal? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so it has to be a dinosaur name that doesn't sound like a dinosaur name. Yeah, I know what you mean. What are the um the Nazgul? That's what they're called, isn't it? We call them Nazgul. I had an Irish friend get mad at me because I was making fun of his accent, like repeating things in his head the same way back. I thought, yeah. I thought it was fair game. I thought it was fair game. I don't understand. Did he go, yo, you fucker? No, I just said that same thing back. Like I kind of understand why you're saying the same thing back that I'm saying. Making fun of what I Did he get upset? Nah, he calmed down after that. That is. You just gotta stare him down. Most people don't really want trouble. Holacanthus, <laughs> <laughs> no. Evidently, uh, Arya's wife's family found uh, news about Arya's ass. Funny. <laughs> Good. That's that's very gratifying. I don't know why. We're only stating facts. I get. I think they don't know. I think they haven't seen it yet. How could you miss it? It's fucking massive. Well, maybe they haven't seen him since. He's been in the hospital. Yeah. Maybe he's just sitting down. Like... Irritor. No. Hypsilo... Hypsilophodon. Hypsilo... No. Say what you have a mouthful. <laughs> No, no, no. Gu Guabisaurus. No. Yeah, don't do Saurus. No, nothing Saurus, right? You're absolutely right. No Saurus. Too cheesy. Too jet TPT. I want dinosaur names. But <laughs> you want dinosaur names. Here are your fucking dinosaur names. Give me dinosaur names that don't end with Saurus. John. <laughs> John, Steve. It would just do like dragon names, probably. Barin, Barino, Baronic? No. Veronics? No. Sounds too like my like my Aunt Berenice. Yeah. Nah, I'm not gonna get it today. Don't oh, cool. But the seed has been planted. You you leave this to my subconscious. Okay. That's how we got spore, remember? Yes. Because the idea existed before I thought of it. And I know that because I was sure when I came up with Splotch, yes. I was sure that at least part of the word was It was correct. almost there and you had the right amount of syllables. But yeah. Squatch sounds a bit wacky. Spore right. sounds perfect. Hardcore. Yeah. You know what the kids say? Splotch sounds watch and spore is hardcore. Yeah. Hardcore spore. Spore is a good name for a super hero. You reckon? A, ga a gas hero? Well, like someone that's made up of spores, you know, so he could release himself and then a bit like Sandman. What do you mean release himself? Yeah, you know, Sandman sort of releases himself into the wind. Oh, yeah. He turns into like gas. Forms. Yeah, if you were made of spores, it would be like that, but with like fungi. So you'd... a bit like a cross between Sandman and um, Swamp Thing. Yeah, you could get biblical, right? You could do like... To return to dust stuff. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Look, you could do the old, um, the smart 
uh, fungi, like super smart fungi, bring someone back to life. On the a bit like Swamp Thing, but they're made of spore. You know, that'd be fucking nice. Yeah, the difference is, you know, Spawn's not such a fun guy. No. <laughs> He's a cunt. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? it has begun. When Rob's not here, one of us takes his place. Yeah, we just do it. We just carry on, man. Yeah. The show must go on. Yeah, man. I'm into Spore. Spore the character. People could breathe him in. What happens when you breathe him in? I don't know. He could control you, maybe burst out your body. All something. manner of things. Yeah. Like it depends on what he wants to do, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, he could grow inside someone else, take over their body, and essentially have a clone of himself that he could control. Spores, but it would look like the guy, right? It would look uh, like the body. Yeah, maybe, maybe at first. But if he's if someone's cloned for too long, they eventually start to look like whatever sport looks like, which would just be all the spores start growing over him. So his clones only last for so long until they just become unrecognizable. Okay. The spores Are you last for they plant and they grow, don't they? I see. Are you familiar with the Galaxy Trio? No. Do tell. Well, um, okay, because of my IP, I can only show you this in Spanish, which is kind of more fun, actually. Okay. Chris and she share screen. The point of this is that there's a, a gas gimmick superhero. Right, right. So that's cool. So so this is what some spores can do. They can attach themselves to animals. So there's a spore that attaches itself to a rat that makes the rat hunt out a cat so it can be eaten and then the spore gets eaten a helicopter just flew directly over my house oh is that what it was yeah sounds like an earthquake it was a helicopter but it was hella close <laughs> it has begun no but 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 for, for right, you're was, coming in you are becoming was, the helicopter did just fly over my house no i believe you but still and i am dressed like ray liotta so but still it has begun I can neither confirm nor deny that the helicopter was looking for me. But um, anyways, I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. About what? About Spore Man. <laughs> I'm sorry. About Spore. <laughs> Uh, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> I was no, saying, no, no. Come on. <laughs> I was saying that there are some spores that attach themselves to uh, rats' brains and then control them to seek out cats, so they get eaten. And then the spore uh, grows inside the cat. The cat shits it out. Then it reinfects another rat, and then it's the life cycle. That's called toxoplasmosis. That's it, yeah. Uh, yeah. A to toxoplasmosis uh, powered superhero? Yeah. 
yeah that's a good idea that's a spore so it's a type of spore so yeah yeah, yeah you could no do yeah i'm with you that's a great idea So yeah, you have loads of cool, pretty probably pretty gross uh, abilities. Sounds quite like a very body horror character. It's body horror, yeah. Body horror anti-hero. Yeah. That's that's cool. I like that. Toxoplasmosis. And there's also fungus that yeah. controls ants. Oh, yeah. And that's so, finger ahead. So the ant climbs a tree all the way to the top, which an ant would never do. Yeah. And then just sits down and dies. And then a horn, like Evangelion, right? Yeah. Imagine Evangelion ant mecha. Okay. That's this horn, and it's purple. And out of this comes spores. And it has to be high up like that to spread right so they're like gee if only there was some way that ants could cr crawl all the way up there and evolution was like we can do that yeah we can do that right yeah like a natural function that's already possible with the, with the elements present yeah we'll manipulate that so we have these zombie ants with this purple unicorn horns it's really cool. Yeah. The spore man could infect humans and, you know, do the equivalent. We could also have, like, some kind of rogue wizard that creates, um, basically, chemical weapons where the Ramos soldiers, right, the ants, they get their bodies controlled remotely. Yeah. By a wizard, right? Have you did you ever watch um Castlevania? Yes. Did you like it? Yes. There's um I'm sure there's a there's uh something similar in that where a um a wizard controls a bunch of people. Yeah, I think you're right. Um it's a good idea, man. But we could like apply anything applying it to Rokon, what would be unique about oh, it would be like the ants, right? Because we could play on the ants with the helmet. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, it's a great idea. Like imagine this, right? Like you've you've seen silos, above ground silos or towers. No, a tower. Yeah. A tower or a lighthouse, something like that, and the motherfucker climbs up it. And kills himself. Yeah. Right? yeah. And then the and his helmet helmet changes and the horn comes out of the helmet and releases the spores, right? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And then that infects more zombies. So the wizard's power grows, right? Has he got like uh is it like a spell or has he got like a spore magic? Um, it's going to be spore magic because this is going to be an antagonist for Rokan. Cool. This is going to be an enemy that he had that Rokan has to kill, right? Because he's a witcher, which means that he uses other living beings, in this case, fungi. His magic derives from fungus. If he doesn't have the fungus, he can't do it. Rokan's right. magic derived from himself right that's a good idea you like that yeah i just thought of that yeah you can really play on the ant thing then as well i think it could be gormal that does this yeah yeah because in book two of rokan which i haven't um written yet but i'm outlining it in book two of Rokon, we spoilers for Rokon, the novel that doesn't exist yet. But in book two, he there's a there's a war, right? Ramos goes to war. Rokon is part of that war. And Gormal is involved. 
right? And so that could be like how, what he does, kind of black cauldron style. He takes either dead or maybe still alive, who knows? That might be more fun actually. Yeah. He takes over soldiers, bodies, and he does one of them. And then this first one does the spore thing. And after that, he gets the whole century. So then, boom, he's got a 100, 100 zombie army, you know? Yeah, Just yeah. like that. And yeah. so then that's how he gets involved in the war because all of his troops are zombies. Right, I see. Yeah, man, that's good. That makes a lot of sense because I, I needed a plot point of why he's in the war. All right. Right. Now right. I've got it. You hear that? Yeah. What was that? Bro, it's this helicopter. They after you. No bullshit. I don't. Nobody's after me. But also, no bullshit. There really was a helicopter. Both no. Times. Yeah. It's just a coincidence that I'm dressed like Ray Liotta. They're not. <laughs> you don't look that strung out. You're all right. Hey, Ray Liotta called. <laughs> they want their receding hairline back. <laughs> all right, so peep this. Go. Well, that's a commercial. Sorry. No, I don't want the fucking trial. Thank you. Screen? Yeah, the stadium. Yeah. Wait, what in the world? This is the wrong thing. Galaxia en los guerreros diabólicos. So if you don't speak Spanish, you uh, in what well, something about Dean and no. But yeah, one of them is about is solid. One of them is liquid, and the other one right. is gas. That's the right, right. So yeah, Their the powers do, are derived from that. Yeah. So Spore, you're thinking, is kind of like this gas guy? I think he's solid. I would um, – he's just – yeah, he's just made of Spore. Yeah, I suppose he sort of is a gas, a bit bigger than gas. But he's, he's more like molecule-y? Yeah, I would, if I were to draw him, I would, I would draw him um, looking solid until he, you know – wasn't okay as a huge boy he'd be more um swamp thingy i suppose okay so like the swamp thingy yeah i'm thinking if swamp thing was made out of fungus and he was black just pure black all black swamp thing yeah Obviously different. I, I do him different, but that, that sort of feel. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. That sounds cool. If a fungus had to try and recreate a human, it would be a thing, wouldn't it? I feel you for sure. Yeah, dude, I'm into it. I'm into it. That is a cool idea. And then... Spore could debut in Spore magazine. Yeah. yeah, you do a couple of pages for the first issue, and then you can then you can, the logo can be your equivalent. Of, you know, when you put the character, that could be the, one of the Spore logos in the top corner. 
just the face. Okay. You know, I mean, they, they do Marvel and they put Spider Man there. If you wanted. I do want to. So, you, but you're, you're saying do the head of, of Spore the Superhero? Yeah. Whatever that ends up being. Whatever that is. Okay. And then will we also do the head of Rokan? Yeah. I, I, yeah, you absolutely can. But if it's called Spore, then. If the, if the, but are we gonna do like a, a lineup along the side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of each superhero in the issue, yeah, the flat, the flat uh, faces facing forward, like the like, like on the Marvel comics. Yeah. Yeah. So then every story in the book, you got that guy's head, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. It's going to be so interesting. Got just as a, for example, it's going to be an interesting project, right? Because every time I've seen these projects um, uh, manifest through, like the indie crowd, like, like the one I showed at the beginning of the stream, like this one, um, or others, they're yeah. quite um, country centric. So this one's so marketed, marketed, marketed itself. As the hit independent British comic anthology, and the American ones I see, they do the same. Um, but this one's going to be interesting because, and they're all um, American creators or all British creators. But this one's going to be interesting because I think we have a uh, obviously we're from right. two different sides of the pond, so I think we have a different, um, uh, slightly different experiences of of what it was like to be introduced to comics and the culture that we lived in. Um, I'm just interested to see how those sort of things mash up in the design of the of the magazine. Bye. Shit, did I just talk a load of shit then? And then he was like, I'm listening to this. I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch the last bit. Uh, I can't even remember what I was saying. What was I saying? That's getting really annoying. <laughs> it wasn't a helicopter. It wasn't a helicopter this time. It was a lag. No, don't worry. About I was just saying it would be. Oh. Okay, now. What's this, man? Shit. The longest stream ever. Then, uh, I'm really sorry. I just have to get this package. It'll take me less than a minute. It's Here fine, man. It's fine, yeah. Take your time. Do, 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 do.
Hey, man. That song's five out of five, man. That's a five star song. Yeah, it's quiet. Did you get your uh, big package? Yeah, I did. It's about yay big. Not that big. It's for my wife, though, so I'm not going to open it. Fair enough. I don't even know what it is. So what? <laughs> Um, yeah, I was saying um, it'd just be interesting to see the mishmash of um, British and American approaches to comics because uh, every other uh, um, sort of indie anthology I've seen has been quite country centric. Okay. See what I'm saying? I don't. Think so. I haven't seen one where it's been American and well, nothing indie that's been American and British uh, created at the same time. I think we've got slightly different um, experiences uh, with growing up with comics because of where we lived. And I think they're going to be interesting things to play with when we come to the um, creation of the comic, of the Spore specifically. So you're saying, you're saying we're the Fleetwood Mac of comics, Kate? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. You know what, you know what I mean by that? Um, why is there British and American influences in there? There's British and American members, right? Right, integrants, if you will. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of their that's kind of the thing that they're known for, right? Well, one, one of the things that they're known for, right? Right, well, yeah, I'm just I'm interested because, um, to see if that becomes a factor. It could do. Well, I think you're. I, I just feel like our, our experiences with probably growing up and buying issues is different because comics. When I was a kid, they weren't really available. Like you couldn't. American comics are really difficult to get hold of for a really long time. So. Um, yeah, it was kind of like a, a a a time machine effect. Yeah. With a lot of the influence. Yeah. Exactly. Because. We're all we're both aware of the same things by now. Yeah, but, yeah, now we are, yeah. Right. So I've read a lot by now, but I didn't grow up on it, right? What you right. grow up on makes a big difference. Sure. Yeah, that's a good point. That's that could be that could be really interesting to see how that goes. And I love the idea of these different superheroes being featured because I, and it doesn't even all have to be superheroes. It could be other stuff, but like, I really like the idea of, of recurring care protagonists. Yeah. Or not. Right. Cause like, so I, I may, I'd like the idea of maybe a one-off, a one-off story. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of fun too. Quite, quite nice to, uh, to, yeah, do experiments with with issues because people will um, tune in for because they prefer different things. So if you feel like you you know you haven't hit the mark, it doesn't necessarily matter that much as long as the rest of the book is strong. Do you think people would email if we promise to answer every email and uh, then? Yeah. And, and if we said, like, tell us which stories you liked or didn't like and why. Well, it would be, okay. you, might, you, don't, you don't ask, you don't get, so it's probably worth a try. Isn't it worth a try? And then we could do, like, some kind of, what's his name? Thrag, the the whatever. Thrag, Django. Thrag, the white. Trigger yeah. double. Yeah. Thog in it. What's his name? Thog. Thog, Thog the Mighty. Yeah, he's the one in Heavy Met in um, 2000 AD answering yeah. letters. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. so yeah. we have some kind of some kind of character like that where he and well, so we never respond to the emails. At least, no, we don't email them back. We don't send emails. We publish our. Uh, 
responses. Yeah, publish the best ones. Right. Yeah. We just put it in the book. Yeah, the ones we feel like answering right? are the ones we we want we want to right. And yeah. then that could be like a bit of it. And then that will tell us too, like uh, which stories to continue. Yeah, for sure. Right. Flower chase the sunshine, aka supply and demand. Right. Yeah, it's a good way of doing it and staying. Um, yeah. Published communication with your fans. Yeah, man. You're right, bud. Yeah, dude. I'm a little tired, but I'm good. Well, we've been going about two and a half hours. So yeah. it might be time to pull the plug. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, let me know. Yeah, so the change, the fire comes out of maybe his finger or maybe his palm. Yeah. One or the other. I think with with uh, with Abadir we did finger, right? That was pretty good. And then he lights it off the stick, which was your idea, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, do that for sure. Do that. And if you have any other um, suggestions, let me know. Yeah, we'll do. Absolutely. Cool, man. All right, dude. Thanks for uh, spending some time, man. That was a good chat. That I got some stuff done as well. Heck yeah, dude. And awesome. these are good ideas. I'm going to think them over. Okay. Take it easy, brother. Okay. Night. See ya. Night. Night. Where the fuck is all my shit? Uh, bye.